Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii Asia in Review. I'm the host Johnson Choi. The guest today is Jay So. Um, Jay So was uh, born in uh, Alaska, educated in UK. She one time she wanted to be an attorney, but uh, changed course and uh, own her restaurants. And after for, after a while, she decided to do something new. So uh, she is doing something very interesting. Is to bring a biodegradable uh, product from South Korea to Hawaii. In the past, uh, we heard a lot of uh, uh, a lot of people uh, bring stuff from Asia, and most of the time, we see people bring stuff from Asia, uh, usually from China or from like Vietnam, Indonesia, and Philippines. And most of the time, when we think about South Korea, we think about South Korea cosmetics, and of course the car, including I own one of the Korean car too. So today, uh, we are very fortunate to have Jay Show to be on our show. And Jay, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you, Johnson, okay. for having me. Uh, we have discussed a little bit about uh, your new venture. In fact, uh, your new product uh, yes. going to bring to Hawaii and throughout North America. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Sure. So we have created the world's first biodegradable, compostable, food packaging item called 100 Bio. And it's uh, compostable uh, plates, bowls, containers, clamshells uh, for the food industry. Uh, we'd also like to uh, penetrate the school districts, uh, hotels, large food, uh, food franchises, and even the local mom and pop shops. I understand that your product is uh, very unique. In fact, you have uh, some patterns to, to, co uh, to cover your invention without going into detail of your, of your pattern or giving away your trade secret. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you come about uh, uh, finding this unique idea and turn it into uh, patterning it and then uh, bring it, the, the product into the market? Well, like any other product that uh, requires a lot of technology and innovation, it takes years and years of R&D and uh, studying and uh, trial and tribulations. Uh, so we're, we're close to a decade into this project and after filing for four patents and, uh, and being approved for four patents, we're now able to launch our product here in the United States uh, and as well as Hawaii. So uh, my understanding your product is uh, right now uh, being made in South Korea. Correct. And you also mentioned that your raw material actually came from the United States. Correct. So we have many sources of our raw material, but the two major sources is one, one major source is from, from Asia, and then the other source is from a, a large uh, raw material provider in the United States. So uh, how does the, the process go? I mean, right now you basically are, are, are selling to major distributor uh, throughout the United States, and if someone uh, I know a lot of like, like I spent a lot of time in California and, and so are you, you know, and also in Hawaii, you know, I noticed that uh, even in the state of California, uh, different city and different county have different rules in uh, dealing with uh, disposable uh, material. Correct. Yes. So our, our product is commercially compostable and it composts in nine weeks. Uh, which means that there, sh there should be a local composting facility available. And the greatest thing about 100 Bio being able to launch this year is that now there's many resources for the end of life for the product. Uh, we are selling directly to local distributors as well as large franchise directly to consumers. So right now you said you're basically targeting uh, primary uh, the food service and also the, some of the industrial uh, like the government uh, like you mentioned, the cafeteria or the, or the hotel, stuff like that, right? Yeah, so currently we are targeting uh, the food service industry because our product is mainly food service, uh, i.e. Pl plates, bowls, cups, clamshells. Uh, eventually we'd like to grow. However, uh, it, for initial stages, we are targeting food service. Uh, I know a lot of time that uh, a lot of like supermarket, they don't ha even have to uh, give out a plastic uh, package or even paper package in some uh, city, and they encourage people to bring their own container or their own bags to carry the stuff. Uh, so, in terms of uh, cost-wise, uh, comparable. I mean, uh, I know it's probably higher than the good old uh, plastic, but uh, how do you feel the acceptable in terms of? Uh, 
or well, the industries. Yeah. It, it would be nice if we could all take a to-go container with us and carry it with us and pack our food in it. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, is we're in an ind we're in a time where uh, everybody's on the go. We've got. Uh, families who have sporting events and uh, you know they've got soccer practice and piano lessons and so these families are on the go and they're uh, they're very busy. Uh, the pack and pack and go meals are very popular. Fast food industry has grown, so our product is timely, especially with the composting programs that are now implemented in various cities. Uh, as far as comparison and price goes, we are competitive with certain plastics, depending. We are competitive with other com uh, compostable products, uh, except for sugar cane, the gas. Uh, eventually, we'd like to be competitive with all plastic. And then, of course, eventually, we'd like to be competitive with EPS foam. I see, I see. Yeah. So the end in mind is to be price competitive, but to also uh, be able to provide a product that is sustainable. So, uh, so far, uh, I'm, I assume you did uh, some test marketing with uh, people that buy your product and you do have a sales team uh, in, in the mainland. Mm -hmm. And you also have uh, yourself and another person you mentioned that are doing uh, uh, the sales in Hawaii. Uh, so far, how is the, uh, the kind of impression uh, your end user are, are saying? I mean, uh, say for example, if you have some uh, large uh, fast food restaurant that uh, want to use a product, you know, I'm sure that you probably can put the name on the container and just like, you know, stuff like that and... Surely, of course. So we can customize for large franchise who prefer to have their name embedded in our okay. product. Uh, but we, we've had some very good reception from the general public. PLA, which is what our product is made from, it's not unique to, to the food industry. There's tons of products out there that uh, contain PLA, but to be able to use 40% less raw material and oh, and to be able to foam it, then you're, the, the product is lighter, uh, it's more insulating, shock absorbing. Uh, so those are the feedbacks that we're getting. Uh, you know, when you drop a carton of eggs, uh, what is the retention rate of your the, of the damage? So we've had some really good feedback on it. Because nowadays, when you look at a lot of people, uh, like you mentioned, you know, they, they, you go to the supermarket, you have those prepackaged food that uh, for the busy moms and dads that you know, pack it up and go home and microwave it. And uh, how, is it? Uh, can you microwave your product? I mean, how how does it? Uh, Our product is microwavable, but just like any other product, we don't recommend anybody oh, microwaving I see, I see. microwaving it. But it is microwavable. It is non-toxic, so even if you accidentally ingest it, you'll, you're going to be okay. If your dog ingests it because you had your takeout food in it, he's going to be okay. So I guess if you drop it in the ocean and the fish eat it, it's okay. If the fish <laughs> eat it, it's okay, but we, do, of course, we don't want people to have know, the idea that, they, the ocean, right? that they can put it in the ocean yeah, yeah, because yeah. that is our end in mind yeah. is because of all the waste that's in yeah. the water. Because one of the things we notice is like when we, like I travel, you know, like going to uh, some uh, cities, uh, when I go to like Alawai uh, Harbor, when all the yachts is uh, parked and you see all this garbage, you know, uh, probably non-disposable or yeah. uh, that is floating in the ocean and nobody seems to clean up. And then I go to a uh, city like Sydney, Australia, I mean, the oh, the, the ocean front is so beautiful and there's hardly any garbage. I don't know whether they have a better city to clean up the garbage or they are using disposable <laughs> uh, bio, uh, disposable products. Well, Australia is a big market for us, as well as Trinidad, Tobago, the Caribbean islands. Uh, so I find a, a, a pattern that uh, in, in areas where they have a, a very small real estate, they implement strong government programs to recycle and to compost and to be cognizant of our waste. Well, you mentioned you were born and uh, raised in Alaska mm -hmm. and why Hawaii is so attracted to you? I know you spend a lot of time uh, between uh, LA and Hawaii and, uh, <laughs> and you have a home in Hawaii too actually. Well, why not Hawaii, right? <laughs> right. It's fantastic here, it's beautiful, the culture is wonderful, the people are very, very kind here. Uh, and it's easy to grow a family here. I see. It's easy. So how how do you uh, look at Hawaii in terms of uh, you know we always talk about Hawaii is in the middle of the Pacific, right? Mm -hmm. The state have been selling that uh, that we should be able to connect uh, both the West Coast and East Coast and make Hawaii a little bit more dynamic. And we try uh, different stuff. You know, we try to be 
uh, high tech. You know, the, that's why the Think Tank Hawaii is one of the uh, early creation by Jay Fidel. Way before we talk about Act Two Two One, when we could invest in uh, high tech, including including your product. If your product was here uh, for R and D, like right. fifteen years ago, you could have people invest in your R and D, <laughs> and the investor could get a hundred percent return. On the investment through tax credit, you know. Right. Fifteen years ago, yeah. if this came out, then we would have been able to have right. a so, large help from the government. So Hawaii now is the middle Pacific, and 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 you know, as an island state, we have to basically ship everything here: vegetable, you know, your stuff, your product, and other things. And uh, how do you see maybe South Korea and Hawaii can maybe do more stuff, you know, and you know, besides uh, maybe cosmetic and. and Car, you know, I know you mentioned about tourism. Maybe you can enlighten yeah, us so what Hawaii can do to make it more uh, friendly and more exciting for the young Korean mm -hmm. tourists that like action, like like doing stuff. Korea, uh, Hawaii is already fun and exciting, yeah. but I do notice a lot more Korean tourism here in Hawaii, and I'm happy to see that. In Korea, in the past, we've stuck with just traveling locally, uh, going down to the islands on the south uh, of the peninsula. But now I see more of the younger generation wanting to uh, retain more experiences. So rather than spending money on clothing and purses and shoes, I, f I find that uh, the younger generation are spending money on experiences. So traveling, uh, food, uh, things of that nature. And so Hawaii has been an all-time dream of many Ho Koreans to travel to. Uh, a lot of times it's, it's uh, triggered by what's seen on TV and in dramas, uh, which is what another thing that Korea is famous oh, yeah. for. The K-dramas. The K-dramas, <laughs> yes, absolutely. So, all over the world. Yeah. Actually, I have friends that sometimes Guilty. we go out, or the old, some old lady say, oh, I have to go home by a certain time. You right. know? Of course, now you have TV, TV already, you can mm -hmm. record it. But oh, and online streaming. <laughs> right. But uh, a lot of the traveling on, in the Korean dramas used to be in Hawaii, so I feel like a lot of the, the younger couples that are getting married come to Hawaii. Yeah. And they do their honeymoon here and vacation here, repeat vacationing, and uh, they want to experience the American life. And this is almost as close to America as they can get without going onto the mainland. And plus, traveling from Korea, it's eight hours away. It's fantastic. Right, that's close by. Yes. Uh, what can we do in Hawaii that can make it uh, even more attractive? I mean, for for the tourists. I mean, well, if you are a the ocean is not enough. <laughs> well, you know the you know, weather. Sun, sea, and surf, there's a lot of places like Bali, you can go to Bali, you know, Indonesia, they have uh, beautiful beaches and mm -hmm. there are other places in Asia. But of course, coming to America is a little bit more expensive too, you know, but you know, everybody have a budget to work with, right? But of yeah. course, money is no object. You can go to, you can go to Paris for a dinner and then go to <laughs> London for whatever, you know, but people have a budget. So sometimes uh, we try to, we were talking about a lot about the uh, make it a better experience for, for visitors and then since you're on the South Korean uh, Well it's it's hard to say. Hard I mean say I guess that. if you infiltrated the ocean with chocolate syrup and <laughs> <laughs> entice people to I come here and, and give them more of a reason. But it, it the place is beautiful here. Yeah. You know, a lot of the Koreans love coming here for the weather. The, the tranquility, I see, I see. Uh, because Seoul, Korea, for the most part, when you think of Korea, you think of Seoul, and it's very busy in the city. I mean, it's hustle bustle, and people are elbowing each other on the subway. So when they come here, I feel like they truly do feel like they're on vacation. So in order to increase more traffic, uh, I would, you know, maybe more vacation packages. Koreans are very foreign to this place, and so if we created some more vacation packages, it would maybe uh, push them further to want to come over and, and not feel the, the tension of planning a car, a hotel, and etc. Okay, we are probably going to a uh, short commercial. In, uh, uh, so when we come back, I will ask you more questions about uh, your viewpoint about uh, Korea uh, performance economically in Asia has been one of the uh, bright star in Asia. So uh, we'll be back in a few minutes. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science here on thinktechhawaii.com. I hope you'll join me every Friday at 2 p.m. to discover what's likable about science. Aloha, I'm Kirsten Baumgart-Turner, and I'm fortunate to be able to host Sustainable Hawaii at thinktechhawaii.com. I hope you'll join in with us every Tuesday from 12 noon to 1 p.m. to see the interesting people we have to share with you their information. Aloha. 
Hi, I'm Kili'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute. I'd love you to join us every week, Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. for Ehana Kako. Let's work together. We report every week on the good things going on in our state, as well as the better things that can go on in the future. We have guests covering everything from the economy, the government, and society. See you Mondays on Ehana Kako at 2 o'clock p.m. Until then, I'm Kili'i Akina. Aloha. Welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii Asian Review. The guest today is uh, Jay So and Johnson Choi, the host. Okay, before we went to the break, we talked about South Korea. And uh, South Korea uh, used to be called one of the four dragons, the South Korea, the Taiwan, uh, the Hong Kong, and the Singapore. And for a long time, the four dragons are the, are the sparks in Asia. You know, everybody talk about four dragons. But, mm. Lately, there are some challenges on some of the dragons that we don't want to go into. So I just want to focus on South Korea right now. And I see a lot of good stuff happening in South Korea. Maybe you can enlighten us since mm. you travel to South Korea so often. <laughs> well, I, I'm not an economics major, but the, uh, there's a lot of, even in front of your eyes, there's a lot of, a lot of visual growth in, uh, within Korea. Uh, of course, uh, years ago, Korea had suffered and it was essentially a developing country. And now it's, uh, you know, we're, what is it, top, we're 11th in the world in uh, economy. We're seventh in the world as far as import and export. Uh, and fourth is in, in Asia, right behind Japan and China. So our economy uh, is stagnantly growing. And although if you ask the locals, which is what I do quite frequently, how do you feel about your, the economy here? And they'll say, oh, we're suffering, we're suffering. But the economy is doing fa fantastic. Uh, you know, the, a lot of exporting. So the largest exporter of Korea which would be semiconductors. And then, of course, like technology. And, of course, like mentioned before, automobiles. Right. I feel that with the advancement of technology, we've been able to stream uh, Korean dramas. So a lot, there's a lot of exposure for the Korean culture and the food and uh, the fashion the, the, and K-beauty. So I feel like they've made a lot of w pave, pavement into the rest of the world to say, hey, this is what we're doing here. And a lot of people are following it. K-beauty has really grown in the United States even within the last three right. years. And now you see a lot of companies that are uh, selling K-beauty and uh, a lot of companies that are trying to export out of Korea and import into the US. So uh, I, I feel like the economy is very I see. So, you know, I, I still remember not too long ago, maybe 10, 15 years ago, when we uh, go out and shop for electronics, uh, as opposed to like TV and yeah. microwave ovens like that. Yeah. It's almost, I would say, 90% uh, Japanese brand. You know, the mm. Sony, the Panasonic, yeah. the Hitachi. And nowadays, if you go to like the major store like Best Buy or Costco, I mean, and then you find now Samsung, you know, <laughs> almost have everything. You know, you can buy refrigerator, stove, oven, car, you know, whatever. You know, they they have it. Uh, so I, I can see Korea has uh, come, uh, been getting very smart. In fact, they are smart with uh, so many uh, free trade agreements with so many countries, what you mentioned about, right? Mm. So that helps, right? Well, the growth with free trade agreement now, where it used to be just Korea, U.S., it, it has expanded to um, Korea, ASEAN, Korea, China, Korea, Canada. So the free trade agreement, I feel like now Korea has a free trade agreement right. with everybody, which is, which is great. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of the reasoning for the growth in, in technology is, is said because of the high population concentration and what that's Im implemented is a competition for education. Mm -hmm. And also Korea has a very high standard for education. I see, I see. Uh, so the pressure is really uh, on to the pupils where it, they have to really think of something innovative and creative and, and be really com competitive within the books uh, in order to be able to advance. Well, you mentioned Korea has a very good education system. Um, uh, I have to ask your opinion because uh, uh, Taiwan also have a, a mm -hmm. lot of u university, but mm -hmm. Taiwan with 22 million people has 300 universities. Okay. And the biggest complaint they have is too many college graduates, okay. uh, too many masters and too much PhD mm -hmm. and, and, and not enough a blue collar worker that, you know, and ends up uh, a bachelor degree uh, uh, person will probably get paid almost as if you, you can get the same pay if you just finish high school. So does Korea has the issue placing the graduate into industry or into jobs that, uh, that for them? 
Sure, absolutely. The labor cost in Korea is right about neck and neck with the labor cost in the United States, so I would say it's pretty competitive. I see, I see. Yeah. So, so, so how many universities do you have? I mean, the major one, uh, uh, the, the uh, top, maybe, you know. I'm not too familiar with how many universities. I feel like there's another one that, which one is that the pops top up. One? Which one is the top one that maybe, like in, in Japan, you know, all the people potentially go to the University of Tokyo or something, well, right? Well, of so course, there's Seoul National University so and, the and then top one. Yeah, Korea University. I see, I see. Yeah. Uh, we were talking before the show that you know uh, Korea is uh, now uh, joined the uh, Chinese uh, Asian in the, uh, Infrastructure Development Bank, and and it was interesting that I watched the news about uh, three months ago that because South Korea cannot uh, have the train go through North Korea, <laughs> right? Mm. So what mm. they do, South Korea is very innovative. They have uh, put on barge basically and cross a short ocean distance on go on shore and then put on train and then go to Eastern Europe mm. and, and save them a lot of money and time. I think when we talk about logistics and freight, it's a great idea. But as mentioned, <laughs> it, it'd be very difficult to put a railway through North Korea, especially yeah. with the current hostile right, environment. Right. So if we put it on barge and we shipped it to China, and then from China would we be able to put it on a railway all the way to Bridges. Europe? The, it'd be fantastic. Yeah. And I know that they've been implementing that for a while. Um, how much money can we save on freight cost? Uh, how much time can we save on, on logistics? Uh, so if that was to become a uh, implemented program, I would absolutely love to ship Europe and China uh, on a railway. On the topic of transportation, you know, uh, one of the challenges that uh, we difficult for us to um, have manufacturing facilities in Hawaii is, of course, one thing is the land cost. Okay, mm. even though we can get uh, so nothing state land, uh, you still talk about uh, the freight cost. In other words, because as per, well, if you make a stop and send it to a different store, but if you send it to like California, which we have some client that actually have manufacturing facility in California because the raw material is in California and then when they have to ship it uh, back to Hawaii or they have to ship it in the mainland, it doesn't make sense for them to come back to Hawaii. So how do you feel if the transportation costs uh, uh, interstate, not to international, uh, oh. could be lower? Would, would you say you would have uh, more people want to? So starting in September, end of August, beginning of September, we are exporting out of Korea our 100 bio product and we have containers coming straight to Honolulu, which will help in freight costs, rather than going to the mainland, stopping over, and then going to Hawaii. However, freight costs to Hawaii, even if I was to ship directly from Asia, it's four times the cost than shipping to the mainland. So the cost of living in Hawaii, of course, a lot of it's because we have to import everything here, and we have to suffice not just the one million people that live here, but the eight million tourists that come yeah. yearly. So. Uh, it is very costly to live here and, and to try to import and export out of here. So in order to reduce the cost, our 18-month goal is to eventually manufacture in the United States because our raw material is from the United States, and that way we can be competitive with plastic uh, as far as uh, competitive nature in our, in our products and being able to uh, be presentable uh, in the food service industry. So if our raw materials from the states, literally we can just manufacture the raw material and then have it jump over to our facility and then we can ma make our product. Whereas right now we're exporting the raw material, making our packaging in South Korea and then importing it back. So we're paying, we're paying a lot of money in freight. So we'd really look forward to that end in mind to be able to manufacture in the United States and of course to create jobs in the United States as well. Well, I guess, you know, uh, people, uh Call that the price of paradise. You know? <laughs> I mean, it is the price I don't of know that whether that, that is a good uh, term to describe it. I mean, I guess everything is more expensive here. Well, hey, listen, if you've got the sun 365 days a year, I don't mind paying $10 for a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as the pay is uh, comparable to like California, that's fine, you know. But, uh, but uh. unfortunately, our pay scale, you know, a very good example is my wife. Uh, uh, moved to California nine years ago. Mm. Uh, for the same job she's working in Hawaii, her pay in California is, is almost double. Uh, okay. Yeah, but the price of living, right. the price of living, living is uh, well, San comparable. Francisco, though. Comparable, yeah. yeah. 
Especially every time when I, you know, especially vegetable, you know, I, I like to go to Chinatown in Oakland or San Francisco to buy vegetable. But every time when I come back, I try to go to uh, the supermarket have a price shock because everything is, wow, oh my God, you know. Right. So 10 years ago when I started in the restaurant business in Alaska, we suffered the same problems oh, yeah, okay. because we had to barge the vegetables and fruit up north, much like in Hawaii you do. But you also have that two-week lag. The vegetables stay on a truck or on a barge for two oh, weeks, yeah, and so yeah. you don't have that forgiveness of, uh, is my fruit going to last in the yeah, fridge for a week, which most likely it doesn't, yeah. because it already had suffered the two weeks of getting up there. Uh, so uh, here in Hawaii, it'd be nice if we had a lot more sustainable programs as far as fruit and vegetables go, so that we can at least support local farmers and try to get cheaper produce. Well, actually, there are some farmers are very creative and, yeah. and, and doing yeah, quite well. You know, there yeah. are some a lot of them are from uh, Southeast Asia, Cambodia, yeah. Laos, and they have yeah. they have quite a absolutely. huge farm there. And to your point, it's it's hard to say that we're going to manufacture in California because California is very expensive. Oh yeah. Um, I would ideally like to go to Omaha or somewhere in the Midwest and it, because there's a lot more real estate abundant and I have a feeling that we might need a lot more real estate. Uh, we are at max capacity right now and so with the three machines that we have. In fact, if you want to do manufacturing and if you can create jobs, I mean, there's a lot of city and state uh, outside of California willing to give you free land, free building, <laughs> tax credit. I mean, it's Anything not going to happen. Free is great, but nothing is free in this world. <laughs> well, they give you credit. I mean, yeah. they give you credit. But, but there are, you know, because I know Chinese companies are actually going to, not going to California, you know, and not going to, to Seattle. They're going mm. to, I never heard, I say, well, you know, how can you guys operate? Because the, the package is too good to turn it down. So, so yeah. the cost is very important. So you want to minimize your cost. Of course, absolutely. Yeah. Which is the whole purpose of manufacturing in the States yeah, is so exactly. that we can reduce the cost for the end u users. Well, our uh, program is coming to an end. So, uh, and you have any last word you want to tell our uh, audience? Uh, no, for any other questions or inquiries, please Log on to www.tagpackaging.com or 100bio.com for more okay. information. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Thank you for coming. Thank you so okay. much.